at the outset, a heartfelt thanks to Dr. Talwar and Dr. Jasuja for inviting me here, and thanks to Chairperson for giving me this opportunity. Well, I'll be talking about the novel target agents in uh, gastroesophageal cancer. So, if we see the gastric can cancer survival in last 20 years, though percentage-wise it has doubled from 2.5 to 5.2% in 2007 and 13, but still it remains to be dismal that only 5% patients survive five years. And if we talk about the cytotoxics, most of the cytotoxics in a combination of doublets or triplets give a median survival of about 12 months. Hence, there is a need of new targets. And these are all the targets which are illustrated on the screen, which are under the scanner so that some therapeutic benefit can be derived. Some of them have been approved, which I'll be going to, uh, which I'm going to discuss. So amongst all these lists, which are under some form of, uh, in some stage of trial, these four markers have been approved, which are to be tested for which you, we have some therapeutic drugs to produce a clear, meaningful clinical benefit. This would include HER2, PDL1, NTRK, MSI, and even the latest NCCN guidelines recommend testing for all of these. So if I take one of the, these, these markers one by one and start with HER2, this was way back in 2010 when this article in Lancet was published, the TOGA trial, in which on a backbone of 5-FU cisplatin, when trastuzumab was added, it was found that it was having a significant median overall survival benefit. And on the basis of this, this drug was approved in HER2 positive patients. But this was way back in 2010. What is new is this Destiny Gastric 01 study in which this new molecule, famtrastuzumab, also known as NHER2, in a dose of 6.4 mg per kg three weekly, has been compared to a regimen of physician's choice, which would be either anotican or paclitaxel. And mind you, this is beyond two lines of regimen, so third line and beyond. And patients might have even received trastuzumab in their initial settings. So what are the results? There is a very meaningful benefit in terms of PFS and OS, and this molecule might form the backbone of treatment in times to come for HER2 positive uh, malignancies, including gastric cancer. If I talk about the overall survival data, 12.5 versus 8.4 months with a 41% benefit with the significant p-value. Another thing to be noted in this trial is that the patients who are having IHC 3 plus were faring much better than those who were IHC 2 plus and fish positive. So IHC 3 plus were faring better. So this is one of the most upcoming molecules in HER2 positive uh, gastric malignancies. Whenever we talk about a new molecule, we should know about the safety profile of that drug. And if we see the safety profile of this molecule, we can see in the extreme right two uh, uh, columns, the grade three, four events are mostly hematological and mainly it is the neutropenia leading on to a uh, dose reduction or dose interruption. Another very significant side effect would be ILD pneumonitis, which has been found to be around 10% in uh, various patients and even about uh, 0.8 to 1% patients succumbing to it. The next thing to be noted is the anti-angiogenic approach. And these are the various anti-angiogenic agents which are in fray. However, in our terms, in terms of gastric cancer, the molecule which is approved is ramisirumab, which is a VGFR2 blocker. And it has been approved on the basis of this rainbow trial in which patients were given in second line uh, either in combination of paclitaxel versus paclitaxel alone, and the median PFS improved from 2.9 to 4.4 months, translating into a benefit of 52%. Also, the OS showed a clinically significant benefit uh, with 7.4 months with paclitaxel arm uh, and increasing up to 9.6 months when ramisirumab was added to it. Also, this drug was tested as a monotherapy in the REGARD trial, when this was uh, in second line, it was compared to a placebo. It also showed a benefit from PFS uh, increasing from 1.3 to 2.1, though the difference is too less, but it translated into 62% median improvement in median PFS numerically, and which was again clinically significant. So as per the NCCN guidelines, the, the combination of ramisirumab and paclitaxel are approved in the second line treatment. And now, how can we ignore immunotherapy when we talk about any malignancy in this current era? So 
the treatment has been there for third line and beyond. And this was a Keynote 59 study, which was a phase two clinical trial. These patients had been heavily treated in the first two uh, lines, and still the patient achieved an overall response rate of 11.6 with a CR rate of about 2.3%, showing that this drug might be efficacious. Also in the Attraction 2 study, where a similar sort of setting, the nivolumab was compared to placebo in a phase three trial. And this data was updated recently uh, in 2020 at a cutoff of three years when the graph still continued to be separated and a benefit of 5.6% versus 1.9% in survival. Now comes the Keynote 61 study, and here the pembrolizumab, with this was uh, also discussed by Dr. Ramaswamy, uh, Pembrolizumab was compared with paclitaxel in uh, second line and beyond. And again, what was seen over here was that this, though this trial did not meet its primary endpoint, that it was not superior when the CPS score was more than one. But when we saw the subgroup analysis, what was noted was that as the CPS score kept on increasing, the graphs kept on getting wider apart. And it was showing a benefit in uh, more in CPS greater than 10 and even in CPS greater than five. This was exactly similar situation, even when we saw the PFS. Now coming on to ESMO 2020, what's new? This has already been covered by Dr. Anand. So I'm not going into details. These are the details of the Checkmate 6499 study and the Attraction 4 study, which have already been discussed in detail. So maybe it is a time for the combinations. These are the select ongoing biomarker-based trials in gastric uh, and G-junction tumors and esophageal cancers, which are in the fray and for which the results are expected in the near future. And we might have some more agents targeting these, uh, targeting these specific molecules, leading on to uh, some clinical benefit. This would be my last trial, uh, last slide, sorry. And this is regarding the NTRK gene fusion, which we all know is present in various different uh, malignancies in different parts of the body with different incidences. So if I talk about the gastric cancer, it is in the range of about 1.5% and just 3.2%. And uh, in a study for GIST, where uh, in this drug was given in four patients, the response rate was 100%. So this molecule has also been approved to in treatment of gastric cancer to those subset of patients who would harbor an NTRK gene fusion. Thank you.